Hey, so just a flying visit to Cork. I'm here for less than 24 hours. Uh, Covid is on top of Ireland right now. Hopefully I'll get a capture of a little bit of scenery on the way. Upon arriving at Cork, you want to find one of these machines that will get you to where you want to go. Get you on one of these buses here for a princely sum of two, two euros 80 to get you to Cork. So let's see if we can get there. Has to be said that the airport is seriously empty. Covid is taking its toll on this place. Okay, as it's Covid, you have to wear a mask on the bus. Um, people can't sit next to you, so I guess it gives you a place to leave your um, bag. The airport is immensely empty. There's not many people here. However, this is a city that's almost doubled in population in the last 10 years, which is insane. I'll tell you a bit more about that when I take this mask off. So just heading through the um, business quarters of Cork, and it's just right next to the airport. And what's interesting, Apple have their European headquarters in Cork Island. For tax reasons, obviously, they have a very, very small office here, as do Amazon, as do a lot of other big, big tech companies because it's more tax efficient to locate yourself here, right next to the airport, and claim that this is where you do all of your business. The Irish love it because um, it brings them in extra tax revenue, but it also, sadly, it does cheat the rest of the rest of Europe of all their taxes because they only pay tax in Ireland and nowhere else in Europe. So it's a grey overcast morning, it's early, and I've just arrived in Cork at the bus station. This is Ireland's second biggest city. Second biggest obviously after Dublin. Right in the south of Ireland and it's home to Murphy's. And uh, like the Murphy's, I'm not bitter that the uh, coronavirus is here. It does mean that I'm a little bit limited in what I can do. I'm gonna go drop my bag off so I can, uh, can possibly walk around for a little bit, but I can't socialize or anything. And one of the things the Irish are very good at is having a crack. The thing that the world's missing is the crack. There is no crack anywhere like this country, right? There is, like, it's, it is, like, it's... Cork is the home to Murphy's. Murphy's is very similar to Guinness Stout, but it's not quite, it's not quite the same as Guinness, but it's, uh, I have to say, it's a fine tipple. And uh, I was very fond of the adverts growing up. I was the first boy in Cork to kiss her. So suppose it should have been me. like the Murphys. I'm not bitter. Oh it looks like I've just stumbled across the high street. It's a very small town, uh, Cork. The population is just over 200,000. And like I say, one thing that is strange, in the last 10 years, the population has doubled. And it's people from all over the world. Let's have a look. Let's have a look at the empty streets. Welcome to this video. Thank you for joining me once again. I just wanted to point out a slight error in the population that I was talking about. It turns out that Cork has widened its boundaries in the last couple of years, which basically means because of the extra area in the court boundary the population increased because it encompasses more people in, into the boundary so it hasn't actually doubled but Cork is forecast by many analysts to be one of the fastest growing cities outside Dublin so what's interesting despite the lockdown the barbershops are open they only just opened in England so I presume maybe at the same time but as you can see all the shops seem to be closed some shops have gone out of business. Lockdown won't be kind to most streets in the British Isles. Twenty minutes later.
Well, I've just had a breakfast and a coffee. I feel much better now. Nothing worse than not having breakfast. Because of um, the lockdown, planes weren't serving uh, the um, food or drink or anything. But now I'm just going to be looking around. So I actually have Irish connections. My mother's Irish. My entire mother's side is Irish. Her mother was Irish. Her father was Irish. Uh, a lot of them Irish Americans and also Irish, but family scattered all over Ireland. Although on this trip, because it was just a flying visit and I was leaving the next morning, I would see none of the Irish relatives. But that was okay because it gives me time to explore this uh, hidden gem of a city. It's strange what a difference half an hour makes. The street was empty uh, a while ago, now it's teeming with life. Ireland is very similar to most of Western Europe. Most of the shops are very generic, very much the same. However, of course, this being Ireland, there will be some unique independent retailers, at restaurants, pubs, etc. But as you can see, looking around, watching this video, you'll see fairly big major brands and premises that you will recognize and see throughout Western Europe. However, do you take advantage of the cheeses and the local produce? That's possibly one of the reasons to stop off in those sort of premises. So this is the English market. The Queen of England has actually visited this market, so I'm excited. Let's go check it out. Obviously social distancing. Very well, are you? The English market is certainly a tourist attraction in Cork. It was actually opened in 1788. So back in 2018, it celebrated its 230th birthday. It has had a few famous visitors, most notable, of course, uh, being the Queen of England. There's a little part of this market, which we're gonna to get to, which shows the Queen visiting the market. And apparently, she took quite a shine to the Irish fishmonger that served her. Apparently the story goes he made a joke about the monkfish on display and he said we call this the um, mother-in-law fish. That tickled the Queen's fancy. She burst out laughing. It turns out that he was then invited to Buckingham Palace uh, three years later, which is a nice story I think. I don't think a fishmonger would have expected an invite from the Queen. I don't think many of us expect an invite for the, from the Queen. It is one of those places in Cork that you should definitely visit if you like food. And if you've got the privilege of staying in Cork with family or friends, or you're maybe renting a, an apartment, then head down to the English market and buy some core ingredients. My recommendation would be to source out some fish and source out some nice vegetables from here. Don't get me wrong, you're probably going to be spending a lot more money here than if you were to go to the local co-op or the local Tesco's. But the quality, I think you'll probably see from the images of this video, um, probably make the price worthwhile. The number of tenants in the English market are said to be around about 130. It's open Monday to Saturday, closed on Sundays, of course. Because Ireland being a very religious nation, they do take the seventh day fairly seriously. Something that is more rare these days in Western Europe and most certainly in England. The market you see today was gutted by fire in June 1980. But thankfully various conservation societies got together and they effectively rebuilt it in the old classical design that it was made famous for. Having now looked up um, some information on this uh, market since visiting, and I'm slightly regretful of this, when you first come in to the market, first entrance right at the start, there's a mezzanine area and at the top of the mezzanine area is a place where you can eat your food, have a sandwich and have some nice food sourced directly from the market. So if you're seeking locally sourced food and also you think you want to eat in the market, head up to the mezzanine and you won't be disappointed. Nice little atmosphere up there from what I see from the pictures but I have to admit I didn't make it up there. And this is uh, Pat O'Connell's uh, Fishmongers, uh, the place the Queen visited and had a bit of a jolly when she saw the monkfish. And just as we head over here, I think they have the um, memorabilia 
of uh, the Queen. But as you can see, fantastic Irish smoked salmon and lobster. Wow. visiting the uh, fishmongers that we just saw there. Incredible display of fish. And honestly, I think my mother and my grandmother, when she was around, they would love this because the seafood is amazing. Just, just looking. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. You know, I'm really regretful that I didn't talk to that chap. I was trying to be a good boy. I was trying to socially distance myself from the Irish. Uh, when I entered the country, the Irish uh, border guards asked me, please do not socialize. Uh, so this is me trying not to interact with some of the friendliest people on the planet. And the Irish are wonderful, wonderful people. You honestly couldn't meet a more friendly nation. The Irish have got a unique sense of humour, the Irish have got a unique warmness. The Irish, despite the differences and the animosity towards the English as a nation, I've never had a bad experience with Irish people. I am slightly biased because obviously, as stated, that my, my mother's side of the family is Irish. So yes, I am very biased, but I've, no, I've never witnessed any problems from the Irish, no matter what the class, from the low to the middle to the high. They all seem to have a unique warmth. And um, it's one of those things that you get to experience in Ireland under normal circumstances. Obviously, when you're social distancing, not so. So just at the back end of the English market, it's honestly a very beautiful market. And one thing you'll notice when you go in, it doesn't have that sort of odor of sort of rotting fish or sometimes rotting meat. Incredibly clean, well presented. Prices are a little bit higher, it has to be said, but it's fantastic quality as you can see from the fish, as you can see from the meat, fruit and veg, everything was great quality. Obviously the social distancing was happening, there was markings and there was, there was signs telling people not to touch the fruit and veg. Um, but life pretty much getting back to normal here. As you can see, cafe culture has resumed here. And things pretty much do appear normal. The only thing is people, you see the old person still wearing masks, not the bandana like myself, but life is resumed. I've now produced over 300 videos on this YouTube channel. In a way, I hope that regular viewers will have noticed the way I generally travel. I um, try my best to walk around the city and explore every single little detail of the city. And I personally feel this is the best way to see cities. Obviously, I have an advantage. I have legs. Obviously, if you don't have legs, it's a little bit harder to do that. But just literally understanding the geography of an area before you travel in and then just walking the streets and taking in every single corner is, in my opinion, the best way to see a city. What you see here is the old medieval city walls. Uh, Cork didn't really become a, any sort of settlement or city until around about nine, 905. Why did it become a settlement in 905? Well, the Vikings turned up. The Norsemen came down from uh, what today is Norway and today is Sweden, and they came in their longboats, passed England, landed in Ireland, and landed in Cork. And then for the next few hundred years, trade resumed and we built some old city walls. These, these city walls date back to about the 13th, 14th century, and the pigeons now love it. It turns out I was a little bit wrong with my um, date of arrival for the Viking invaders. They actually arrived on the settlement that is Cork today in 915. So it was 10 years out. Um, that was me trying to 
think of the facts on the fly. Um, facts that I think I'd probably only read a day earlier when I was planning my trip to Cork. But this city has tranquil places like this little park where one can find yourself getting lost to the pigeons and the crows, my favorite bird there, the crows. Let's continue. So this is the sad thing about the virus, the fact that all these music bars are gonna be shut for a while still. Uh, one thing you can do when you're here, you can rent a Coca-Cola bike. That works a treat. Nippy way to get round. Although they only seem to do, only seem to do three day passes. And as you can see, obviously new development is still going on. Big student town actually, Cork. And this new building is gonna be a student residences. Just hopefully things recover and the global recession that I'm predicting won't happen. Fingers crossed it won't happen. So the centre of Cork is basically an island. It's separated by the river that basically splits it in half. That means there's multiple bridges all over Cork. So if you want to basically get from one side to the other, there's multiple bridges to cross. And I'm going to go have a look. I don't know if you can see that clock, but it's not clearly not working because it's still the morning and it reckons it's clock seems to have stopped at 10 past four there. If it was 10 past four, I'd be able to check into my hotel and uh, isolate. But as it's early morning, I can't quite check in. And I can't quite isolate until, I, until then. So the hard part is I'm having to keep my distance from people. I'm not allowed to be social, according to the uh, border people. So social, being interactive with people is, can't be done, which is unfortunate because the Irish are probably some of the most social people you'll ever meet. I'm heading up these uh, reasonably steep steps uh, because on the map it's Elizabeth Fort. And when you arrive in a city, you should always try and get your bearings by um, heading to the highest peak. And I think a fort is as good a place as any to have height advantage. Let's hope I can uh, let's hope there's a place to see at the top. I am literally killing time because I can't check in yet. The Elizabeth Fort is a 17th century star-shaped fort. Uh, it was originally built as a defensive fortification on the high ground outside the city walls, but eventually the surrounding city of Cork grew around it. Since 2014, this has actually been open to the public. However, sadly today, due to COVID, there was no chance I was getting in. The place was closed. Sadly, there's no height advantage to being up here. The fort to the side is turned into a coal and gas centre and the fort itself, because of the uh, lockdown, is closed. But everything else is open. Coffee shops are open, barber shops are open, pubs are even open. But museums seem to be closed, but maybe it's just too early. a very standard image for Ireland outside every um, pub or inn. Kegs of Guinness. They drink a lot of Guinness in Ireland. They drink a lot of Guinness all over the world actually. But in Ireland, they drink a lot. The average year in um, Cork has, I think, roughly about 205 rainy days a year. Uh, has, it gets a lot of rainfall because it gets all of the jet stream from the ocean. A lot of, a lot of that water gets dumped on Cork, which makes the surrounding areas incredibly green. 
if you get the urge, if you've got the time, rent a car, go see the Irish countryside when things return to normal because Ireland's a very beautiful place. Uh, my plan is actually to visit the Irish countryside in 2021. I'm going to go with my family and uh, hopefully I'll be documenting that and you'll get to see a little bit more greenery then. So um, stay tuned for that. But in the meantime, take in a little bit more of cork, try and clearly on the outs. This is in the southern part of Cork at the moment, just up on the hill near Fort Elizabeth, which is just there. That's Fort Elizabeth, but I can't get into it. But I'm going to go head down here because I think I can get to the cathedral. That is St. Finn's. It's a Gothic inspired cathedral. Very beautiful. It's got three spires by the look of it. And uh, hopefully I can get into the grounds, but that's uh, where I plan to go have a look. You'll notice around Cork and the surrounding countryside that all the walls are made of these stones, including the cathedral. And here we are, St. Finn Bar's Cathedral. Beautiful place. I don't think I'll be able to go in, and I think it'd be inappropriate if I do go in. So this is St. Finn's Bars Cathedral. It was completed in 1879 and it is one of two cathedrals in the city of Cork. The other being a Catholic cathedral which we will see later and it's just down the road from this in fact. Since the 7th century this site has been a place of worship so in a way it was quite fitting that they built such a monumental cathedral on this site. And I hope next time I visit, I do get to go inside. This time I didn't. Looks a little bit empty, but uh, that's the Crawford College of Art and Design. I don't know how significant that is, but I'll, I'll look it up on Wikipedia and I'll post anyone that's been there just here. There's some uh, really nice little balconies up there. I'm gonna walk across, not that bridge, but I think this bridge over here looks a little bit more, I don't know, it looks a little bit older. So hopefully I'll get to try them all, but uh, I'm gonna try this one. Oh, that is a fine bridge, isn't it? That is a proper bridge. So this walks me back into the main city. I think the hospital's over here. In the centre of the city you'll find the hospital, you'll find the main train station, you'll find the hive of activity. Find pretty much everything. However, however you've got to realise that the majority of the population live on the other side of the, the area. Obviously people live in the centre, but you have people in the surrounding areas. And people uh, commute in. People commute on buses, the train, they drive their cars, they cycle. Or the old fashioned way, which I like to do, I, I walk. Look at that bridge. It's the kind of bridge you, if you were in uh, Norway, you might expect to find a troll under. But uh, as this is Ireland, old meets new. You can see some old, possibly an old mill there, and then these new apartment blocks just here. back there. So this impressive building that you see here is the Cork Courthouse. A little bit 
blustery. But uh, you see the lawyers and the barrist, well the barrist is waiting outside and yeah. possibly a few people waiting, waiting to go to trial. But it's an uh, impressive bit of architecture. Washington Inn doesn't quite look open. But you see there, that's, that's how you spell crack. So the crack is when the Irish have basically a good time. I don't suppose much is going on there at the moment. However, the kegs are out, so some pubs are open, as we saw in the center. Obviously, um, lockdown has been a good opportunity for those that wanted to work to refurb a lot of pubs. You'll probably find, well, because of the social distancing things, a lot of pubs have had to refurb themselves. I can't quite tell if I like that church. It's, uh, it certainly stands out. I don't think Reds is going to be opening anytime soon. Maybe it will, maybe it won't, I'm not sure. But it's uh, probably a very busy bar. And here's a bit of antiquary. I think it has reopened because it was a sign that didn't say sorry closed due to COVID, but it said back in five minutes. So I think possibly it's open. But here's the thing, as soon as you get away from the center and you go to the side streets, you'll notice that probably what was once bustling, busy shops that had slightly cheap rent to the center are now pretty much closed. I could be wrong on this, but I think the biggest population after the Irish in Cork are Lithuanians. Not even the English, it's Irish, Lithuanians and then English. That's probably all changed in the last year or so. And I don't believe because of COVID, because of the expanding population. Populations have come from all over the world. Now you get Koreans, Jap Chinese, Japanese, you get people from Africa, all over. The Irish should become a minority in their own city almost. I don't think you'll find that the Irish were ever asked, but the Irish are projected to be a minority in their own country by 2050. Now 2050 isn't that long off, that's one generation. Within 30 years, think about that, the Irish will not be the majority in their own country. Just one to ponder. weird a new industry has basically sprung up. Hand sanitizer, face masks, somebody's property. I saw it in a lot of recommended um, Forums. Apparently Tony's Bistro does a very good Irish breakfast, it's worth trying. So obviously in Cork we have the Murphy's Irish Bitter, but we also have Mick Murphy Suits, we have uh, Murphy's Pharmacy, over there we had a Murphy's Electrical. Murphy's seems to have got the monopoly on uh, Cork. That's it. I took a Brown's advice on the seventh horse in the accumulator, and in it came. Seventh. But like my Murphy's, I'm not bitter. Especially as I had a side bet on the St. Barnabas people chase. So just doing a sort of COVID observation on what's happened due to this crisis. You notice shops boarded up. Charity shops you'd expect to be boarded up because generally they're run by volunteers and older population. But as you can see, to let, to let, stock clearance. Um, I would say that this is one of the sort of second or third busiest streets, but it's, you know, everything's a little bit more low value than in, you know, the, the shops in this, 
right in the centre. And I would say about 30 to 35 percent of the shops have been closed. Even the, uh, even that one. It's a very strange um, religious memorabilia. This is what reminds me of Ireland. You know, my days when my grandmother was still alive. Pictures of the Pope. She was a big fan of the Pope. But what's strange is the Lord of the Rings DVD. I'm not sure how that sort of fits in with it all. I'm almost half expecting to see a Neil McGregor picture or something. a very classic image when you think of cork. I'm not sure if you've ever looked at pictures of cork, but one of, if you do Google cork, you'll probably see an image, a professional photo done of this sort of spot. Um, nice sort of view. Sadly, what they don't show you in most of the pictures is what's on the other side. Not that attractive, really. On the north side of the city, I appear to be walking up a hill. Uh, interrupted by a phone call, but uh, I'm still on my way to my accommodation. Ah, I'll get through. Kind of guessing if I go around the back of this beautiful church, I'll be able to get some kind of view. At least that's the hope, anyway. So far, getting a good view has been a little bit hard. Access denied. Seems like anytime there's a some sort of church or something, and I know there's a view on the other side. But there's always a wall. So someone's enjoying the view, but it's certainly not me. I really, ideally, want to go to the top of that, but I I won't be going in there. So this is the Roman Catholic Church. I almost imagine, I don't know if it happened, um, my nana would have uh, come to this church. But apparently it's very modern, so maybe she hasn't seen it. Maybe she would have been in one of the older ones. I don't know. I don't know how many churches she would have visited in this town. And one of these things you kind of regret not asking when, uh, when they're alive. But, uh, I'm sure she would have visited. See, these are these are nice little Irish houses, aren't they? Newly tarmac. You can actually smell the tarmac. It's actually so new. So in a way, I don't really want to be standing on it. Irish flag. This is how I picture Ireland. These tiny little houses. Hanging baskets. Images of Christ. The Irish sea air. Because that's one thing you do. You get a good you get a good gulp of sea air around here. Constant wind. Just tiny little houses. That's nice of them, isn't it? <laughs> Just walking past the um, Heineken factory. Obviously the Murphys is in there. And an amazing smell. I mean, if you can think of it as sort of a, 
because it's they're using oats they're using barley they, the, all the yeast and the hop smell it probably smells like a, a nice version of breakfast cereal oaty breakfast cereal but cooking away and the whole air is wafting with this smell it's really really nice actually there's nothing pungent about that it smells like a well i'm sure you've been in many breweries yourself but it's it's a good smell but i don't think it's open to the public it's certainly not open at the moment but i could be wrong i think i'll probably find the entrance here but because of the situation i won't be able to go in which is immensely disappointing but uh we'll come back all of the kegs Slightly Murphy's in the business centre. And uh, yeah, sadly it is closed because of the situation. I'm staying in the Victorian quarter of the city. So uh, almost there. One of the reasons I picked it was because I thought it would give me a good opportunity to walk about before I had to check in. And uh, to be honest, it's perfect. Although now this bag is starting to get heavy. This is my bag that I carry with me. So two very different businesses. One's kept very busy during this crisis and the other one hasn't kept busy. This is how it works, really. It was actually difficult finding accommodation because not all the hotels are open, as you can see. This hotel's closed. But I had to stay overnight because I couldn't get a connecting flight to where I am today. I had, can only get one tomorrow. Hence the reason I'm staying overnight. There's a very Irish name, Gallagher. You know, the Gallaghers uh, hail from Manchester, but I think their mother came over from Ireland, and I think she came over from the sort of the east side of Ireland. Yeah. So you get a lot of Gallaghers in Ireland. When I talk about the Gallaghers, I, there's only one Gallagher. Gallagher's Nolan here. All right, I've checked in. I'm super hungry. Had a little bit of a rest, but I need to get some food. So uh, time to explore a little bit more. A little bit of a view there. Uh, so I'm up on top of this hill, um, up St. Patrick's Hill actually, the top the top side of it. St. Patrick's Hill is just over here. So uh, very Irish, really, isn't it? Very, very Irish. So I've managed to find uh, the highest hill, I think, in this sort of little mound anyway. Obviously, you get higher if you head on to that hill. Um, but I think I headed up St. Patrick's Hill, right to the top, and I get to this lovely place. Uh, you can see the Catholic Cathedral over there. I have a church just there that we saw earlier. And uh, obviously the uh, river in, down in that direction. I will be heading in that direction because I don't think there's too much this way. I'm sure there's a lot of houses, but in terms of things to see, I'm not so sure. But there are some very quaint Irish houses. It's very nice. So it's the uh, property of the Irish Defence Fund, the army basically, I think. Highest mountain in the area. I thought I could get a good view, but as per usual, stop by these walls. But uh, let's continue down there. And you can see it's a very hilly city, in parts anyway. The center is not hilly, but the basin is the center, and then the surrounding peripheral areas where everyone lives, much more hilly. It's uh, probably the highest peak ever as the radio transmitter. Probably can't see it, but. Uh, I'm just sitting here. I got time, it's clear to see. 
So it's turned out to be a nice day in the end. I managed to get something to eat, I got a drink. Um, I won't be going to a pub because I can't. And uh, can't be social, you see. If you head that way, this is the River Lee. And you head, it heads out to the sea that way. The Celtic Sea or the Irish Sea, however you like to say it. And that's the um, Cork Town Hall. Quite an impressive building. I imagine quite a few people got married in there. I'm just going to continue walking around, checking out the sort of surroundings. It's a rather nice city. One thing I will say, it's a little bit limiting if you can't go to the pubs. Now obviously some of the pubs are open, but uh, as I'm not supposed to be being social, I can't really go to them. This is not normal circumstances. If you come here for a weekend or a day trip, obviously you want to get involved in as many of the pubs as possible, because Ireland's all about the crack. And the Irish jig, the Irish music, just the banter of it all. It is unfortunate what's happened to the economy, but look at this, it's a turned into a beautiful day. Amazingly beautiful day. I got lucky with my um, b and because from what I can work out, most hotels are shut. It's uh, a rather beautiful day. When things return to normal and you're heading over to Cork, I do recommend using booking.com to find your hotel needs. I'm not sponsored by Booking.com, however, if you check out my blog, there's a link in the description that will give you money off your next booking. And also, if you are tempted to have a little bit more of a real feeling to your stay, I'd recommend using Airbnb. Uh, and also, check out my blog for the money off code. So, what a wonderful little city it is. It's certainly perfect for a weekend if you're thinking of a weekend. Um, I appreciate I'm in here for one day, but. I think if you were to sort of relax over a weekend, take in some good restaurants with a loved one and some pubs with friends, you'll have a good time. Very charming little city. See, despite the um, incredibly clean streets, Ireland isn't without its problems. There's a large number of the homeless population living in Ireland, for example, just here. They're sort of scattered around Cork. Not as prolific as in London, you certainly see them about. I think with this bridge now, I've now completed every single bridge. I've been zigzagging across every single bridge that leads us into the centre. And I must say that some of the bridges are very impressive, but this is one of my favourites, I think. So we're now past uh, five o'clock, the light has come back to um, Cork. Nice sort of al fresco type dining, people having their Murphys, their Guinness. Yeah. I don't think it's worth filming, but generally right in the center, there's a lot of retail, a lot of, you know, generic shops that you would see pretty much all over Europe. And uh, everything's all very geared out for the retail. Obviously, these businesses have been shut down since March for a lot of them. They're all reopening now. There's been a few casualties, but of course, the master plan was for all the independents to go bust and the big corporations to take over limiting our choice as you'd expect it's a very shiny sort of area with lots of retail a lot of money from all the from the apple people amazon people they've all sort of moved in this area so everything's kind of new I 
do hear a lot of foreign languages, uh, Lithuanian being the predominant one I keep hearing. Some Russian a little bit and some other types of languages. Great for the economy. Has culture been lost? Some might say maybe. Has it been improved? Some, some might say it has, but I, I don't know. I think the jury's going to be out on that one. But the money has flown in, that's for sure. Not as um, beautiful as the Sydney Opera House, but it's a Cork's Opera House. As I can't really be um, socialising, I decided to sort of call, uh, call it a day on the camera. I'm going to go have some food which I've had to bring back to the um, place I'm staying at, simply because I shouldn't really be socialising, I'm trying to behave myself. Um, however, once I'm in France tomorrow, I'll be able to socialise all I like and explore all I like. But I have to say, I'd like to come back to Cork with some mates and just basically check out as many pubs as possible. The next morning. Well, it's a beautiful day, as uh, Bono would say, here in Ireland. And it is early enough for me to go have a Irish breakfast. Social distancing, of course. Let's see how good an Irish breakfast I can find. I've had one recommendation. It was that place I saw yesterday, Tony's. So I'm going to go head off to Tony's. I'm excited. Let's see. Look at that. The moon up in the sky, sun behind me. After this Irish breakfast, I'm flying to France. So I'll see you in France at some stage. Hey, so here I'm in Tony's Bistro, which is in the center of Cork. Got my coffee. I've just ordered the Godfather breakfast. Not the biggest breakfast on the menu, I have to add. The um, biggest breakfast is 50% um, more. The Godfather is $9.95, uh, whereas one of the bigger breakfasts is, I think, is double that price. But I think this breakfast is going to be more than enough. Let's see how it compares to a proper English breakfast. Pork breakfast, that's the, the, go, or the Godfather. It's got Irish uh, black pudding and Irish white pudding, hash browns, Irish potato cake, I think, two sausages, bacon, beans. Fundamental differences between an English breakfast and an Irish breakfast. You've got the fruit sauce, which is not brown sauce, by the way, it's a fruit sauce. And on the, on the toast, they tend to give you jam as opposed to butter, which is actually, so it's a fruitier breakfast, in fact. I just finished my last mouthful, that was superb. Um, I have to admit, I really, really um, do favour the jam on the toast, as opposed to the English way, the butter on the toast and no jam. And to spice things up a little bit, and I'm sure this is a little bit controversial in um, breakfast circles, but I put the, um, the jammy toast with the beans and the egg. It went well, it went well. And the fruity sauce was superb. The Irish sausages remind me of my nana, she's an Irish lady herself, and uh, very different breakfast to the English breakfast, but honestly, you can't really compare the two, they're both superb, and I highly recommend it. As my battery just died, I want to stress once again, Tony's Bistro was amazing. The fruity sauce, the Irish sausages that remind me of my nana, the black pudding, the black white pudding, if there's actually such a thing, but the white pudding, honestly a phenomenal breakfast. And I urge you, if you get the chance, put your jam on the toast, put the marmalade on the toast, 
combine it with the beans and the eggs, and what you get is a phenomenal breakfast. I think I'll probably be doing that when I get home. I'll be adding marmalade and jam to my toast with the breakfast. I just came across some um, people on strike because Devidens have shut down. Devidens is a massive uh, company that's also based in the UK. They um, have shut down premises in Ireland and they've shut down premises in the UK. And because of this, it's the people on the ground, the people that aren't paid too much that are suffering. Uh, private investors own Debenhams and they took their money and during the lockdown crisis they were able to shut down and basically give no compensation to the workers, take their money and move on to the next project. Shocking really. So I made it to the airport, a uh, very easy bus journey. It costs two euros 80 from the bus in the center to the airport. It takes roughly about 20 minutes. And I have to admit, I think it's good value. Here we, here we have the, um, the black pudding and the white pudding, just in case you want to pick someone at the airport. Honestly, I recommend it. Well, I don't recommend it if you're vegan, but it's also honestly very good. The white pudding there, three, three euros 10, or three euros 25 for the selection. You can even get yourself Irish bacon and hear the Irish sausages here. Although in England, uh, Richmond seems to do the job. But um, obviously when you're leaving Ireland, uh, top up up and some Irish whiskey at Jameson's good. The uh, Baileys, give it a go. And um, anyway, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Really appreciate it. If you like this video, do click subscribe. Also give this a big like. I hear that helps the algorithm. If you disliked it, click the dislike button twice. I, I won't hold it against you. Leave a comment, let me know what you hated about the video and also what you liked about, about the video. I really like interacting with you guys and I really, really appreciate it. In the next video, I'm off to France. This plane is on its way to France and Stay tuned for some great content because uh, it's on its way very, very soon. Click subscribe, click the bell notification. You will be alerted for when new content pops up. And please um, do give it a share with your friends if you liked it that much. Uh, uh, my videos don't seem to be very favored by the YouTube gods. So any assistance by anyone that is favorable to myself possibly could help. So. Um, Hopefully I'll see you in the next video and uh, until next time, keep progressing and uh, see you soon.